יופי. by Dalia Arlev um, and by Miriam Yossi Sassen and by Ira Brown and to the weekly sponsorship this week by Chana Sarah Zeller in memory of Chana Sarah's husband Reb David Zeller Olava Shalom Yedid Nafshi Hamatok Vayakar Esther and Shalom Parnas with gratitude to Hashem for the Parnas' family's birthdays this week Eva and Josh Gancher in honor of their 20th wedding anniversary Mazdov 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 Chaim Baruch Hato Adonai Elohinu Melech Alam Sheakol Nia Bidvaron Amen I was testing, I was testing all the I don't even, I don't even want this, I just want to see if you're listening to the daily Allah of it. I was going to ask, uh, you were saying about Amen, if it counts, uh, to, if you give somebody a bracha, like Arish Yasyambim, I always like to see if they'll, they'll Amen. say, oh, thank you. Amen. <laughs> One guy came up here, who was it? Oh, this this mysterious Kabbalistic bus driver that came up, that, dro- that drove this Chevra on uh, Yom Atzma'ut, to mm-hmm. dive with us, right? Yeah. To tell a story about him. Yeah. So he gave me he, he, he gave me all these brachas, because after I heard a little bit about him, he, I, I put my head down in front of him, I said, no, Tene Bracha, he gives me all these brachas, brachas. And I said, um, Amen. And then he looks at me, he says, no. I said, what? He's like, Tatsakh Lagid V'chein Lemar. Meaning, and, and so should be your lot too. Oh. <laughs> but he was being, no, he was being, he was being very tummy. It was beautiful. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a chokhmolog or anything. It was, it was nice. Like yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right. <laughs> All right, dearest brothers, where are we? Wow, what a parak. We began the eighth chapter in Achshat Avrichim on Monday. We're on Daf um, Tzadik Aleph. Daf Tzadik Aleph in Achshat Avrichim. Parak Chet. What we began doing last week was uh, we were speaking a lot about uh, using uh, uh, the, the, meth, the, the method that he was using, the famous methodology of uh, imagery of your, of your funeral, uh, of your, not your funeral, but here just, yes, the day of your death, to kind of give you a shock and a, a jolt to your system and say, hey, you know, you're not here forever. You better as well, you know, you got to get, yeah. to, you gotta get it together. What happens with that? Though? You got it together, huh? What happens with that? Though? Um, so he says, and then the last thing we saw over there was, um, and the last thing he was saying over here was that the greatest thing is to actually not do that while you're suffering. It's actually to do that when things are more relatively, you know, smooth in life choose a day like that to go into the place of like, you know, shock. Like, I'll share with you guys. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, every year around my birthday, my, my birthday's coming up soon, I always get this need to sit down and write and just review the year. I, I mean, I used to write all the, when I was younger, I kept diaries for years. I kept diaries probably from the age of nine to like, gosh, like 23. Like pretty stop? religiously. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I actually don't remember. Year. Then, Start then, no, then I, what I would do is I would then, uh, then I realized those, the years after when I noticed when there's write it, when I have like, you know, daily, some write ups, it was always, I read the first line and I said, oh, I'm on the plane. I, it must be that life got this and that. This Amalek came into life, this, this whole digital world. 
So I think that like mm. later in life I was finding more more of this breathing space that on planes. But now like I don't want to you know I don't want this to be like a last second thing. So I was thinking that I want to actually start writing when I'm actually in a really happy like a really calm and happy place. I don't want to start writing when I'm feeling the stress and the tension and the pressure. I don't want it to be that. Like I want it. To, I'm, I'm the chavana. I'm delaying. Like I'm uh, or that I just. I'm not, I can't wait for it to things for things to be perfect, but it's got to be more that the general place that I'm in is like. If you ask me, what's your inner sound? You know, what's what, what what's the soundtrack of the day? I'm not choosing like uh, I don't know. Uh, huh? Armageddon. Armageddon. I'm, I'm choosing more like a nice James Taylor happy song, like uh, uh, how sweet it is to be loved by you know. <laughs> that's the soundtrack, as opposed to like uh, the Unforgiven. You know. So maybe that's easy. All you have to do is always be besimcha. Which is which is which is very easy. <laughs> it's just an easy thing, right? It's just be besimcha, right? I met a friend now. He has a, he's starting a, a whole movement called LBB. LBB. Let's be besimcha. Wow. When he says it, every time he says it, it's like yeah, why, like choice. Let's be besimcha. So today, what we're going to see, we're going to go and have a little bit of a of a. A little bit of a Nana Chazara, but he's going to continue the last thing we learned, but then he's going to go into the heart of a person that's really dealing with these things. Gam hit pashtut machshavazo. Do you see this on the second paragraph on the page? And Tzadik Aleph. Gam hit pashtut machshavazo tiye kefi sheita v'asferim akdoshim, v'gam lefi shereinu b'foa, v'ashem ishmenu mikola, v'yarich yameinu shnoteinu shel kol Yisrael b'chlal u'v'frat. Though if, if I strengthen my mind like this, with all the things he's given us, with all the tactics, hacks, and advice that he's given us, you know, our days will be longer, of all of Am Yisrael. We're not only trying to do that, in that illustration stuff and the visualization of things that happened thousands of years ago, like Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. We got to do that, like he says here, and it can't be over something that only, we can't use an illustration of something that only a few of us go through. But others don't have to go through. And we hope, maybe, okay, we won't have to go through something so harsh in life, like, like whatever the example is. The Gemara already says in Masech de Barachas, Sof Adam Lamut, the reality is, like we said a few days ago, we all share a common end. <laughs> we all share the way things are going to end in hopefully a peaceful and holy and complete way. And what is that? We're going to be Ezrat Hashem. We'll go to Gan Eden. I'm not going to all the different chilukim, what that means, by according to who. But every person, no one can escape the end of what will happen to them. No one has been able to escape. No one will, besides really one person. Ilya. Ilya Onovi, yeah, which is the whole secret, right? No one's really going to escape this. And when I realized that, when I, when I realized that, then I realized I don't understand myself. He doesn't understand how he'll let himself follow his lust to do things just to fill his, his, his satiate his, his, uh, his lust. He doesn't understand how he could do that. Rag Gamet Advarima what does a person know for certainty, for certainty, for certainty? Tax and death. Huh? Death and taxes. Tax and death. <laughs> he knows that when you think about life, and I actually thought about this for a second this morning, because I just had a little bit of a, of a, I don't want to open my mouth, but I had a little bit of a, thinking about the gematria of Amalek, which is Masach Nasa. You know that? Do you know that? I did not. Yeah, Chaim David told me that years ago. Income tax. Income tax in Hebrew is the same gematria as Amalek. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, he said tax and death. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> following your lead. 
So what's what, I, I can look outside and I see that there's a sun, like this morning, on oh, my Nachman. I told you, chassid of, not, not, not Nate's, the pre Nate's <laughs> show, right? The pre Nate show, like. He wants you to take over that Oh, I thought you were going to say, he wants you to stay up for game sevens of games that you don't really care about. <laughs> <laughs> He's up, right? So we're seeing the sun, right? So I'm looking at that. For, first of all, today was, oh my God. Today was something else. Today was something else. It was really, don't feel guilty if you didn't, if you're up for that. Feel happy. <laughs> But there was something about it today, right? Now, he's saying over here, I know that that's beautiful. I see the sun rose. I know for more certainty that I'm not going to be alive forever than the fact that I could say the sun rose this morning. Now, if I know that for certainty, he's saying, then, then, then what's going on with us? Then, 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 what, what, then what's up with us? Then what's up with us? Right? So how could I, how could I still treat life the way it is if I know, for, if I know certain things for certain? If I know for certain, let's go to the psyche of a person, then how could I still act in, in certain ways which I know I'm going to have, you know, the day's going to come and it's going to be like... So you don't know what that certainty is going to be like. But the Rebbe is saying there's a shlaf before that. You don't have to know what the certainty is going to be like, but you know that it is. It's Just like with a child. You love your child? Of course you do. What's the certainty of what he's going to be like? There is you don't know, but why do you love them? Because you know it. You know it in your heart that it's, you love them. To me, I look at that as the same way as a lot of people nowadays, unfortunately, look at Tisha B'Av. I don't know what it's like to have the Beit HaMikdash, so I can't mourn the Beit HaMikdash. I don't know what it's like to be dead, so I, I get it. I have an idea. Right, but but the, there's one main difference, is that each person hopes and prays that they're going to see the Beit HaMikdash in their time. They don't know it. Each person knows they're going to die. That's the difference. You have to think about that. It's a, it, that's the chalukah there. The shoneh. I may not be able to relate to it because I'm not there yet, but I know that will that is a given. I pray, I hope with all my heart and soul, I will have a Beit HaMikdash in my days. I'll do whatever I can. Hopefully, hopefully. But death, is something in the Gemara says, no one has ever escaped. So when I, that's very clear to me, not in a freak me out kind of way, just in the most realistic way of how I'm living my life, it's got to do something to me, and if it doesn't, I have to ask why, and that's what this parak is. It's really answering your question. How could it, like, I'm still able to go on with my life. How could that be? So he's going he's gonna to answer it in his own way. So he says over here, so he ends off again saying over here that if you're really, really um, vulnerable enough, I would say, I mean, that's probably the right word over here, vulnerable enough, if you're really open to going to this place of wanting to wake up for real, Take into account not just the day of death, the few days before that he says over here are very yamim charidim me'od, and he says, of course, what happens to you the day after, right? What happens to the day after? Now again, this is not a this is not a good way to live your life day in day out because you should be focused more on being alive than thinking about what's going to be with you when you're dead. But he's speaking here about the person that's trying to snap out of the slumber of life. That's what we're speaking about over here. But waking up and holding on to something to wake me up, to strengthen my thought, the way I think about things, to wake me up. Who doesn't want to be woken up? Look, the holiest, you know, the holiest. It's amazing how everything Kedusha, the other side comes in also, right? The other way. Like, how do you, like, what's the strongest movement in the world today? Woke. What? Woke. What's woke? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> not in, mamash, not important. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, mamash. Okay. So a person gets a little bit sick. But then a person gets better. 
ואתה אינו יודע מה זאת שנמשכת והולכת מהחלטו, וקשה לו לצאת ממנה. But he's in and out, he doesn't, can't, he can't just, he can't rid of himself of this מחלה that he's going through. אין לו חס ושלום כל כך קשה עם מחלתו. And, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, מרמה ומרגיע איש את עצמו. So a person's calming himself down. אבל כאילו בביצה הוא שקוע, but he's, he's like he's sunk into a swamp. הביצה is a swamp. שכל שדומה לו שכבר הוציא, הוציא רגלו אחת ממנה, רגלו השנייה שוב שוקעת בה. You get, you, you get one leg out of the swamp, you think you're about to come. Um, שלשום כבר הוטב לו, few days, two days ago the Israeli had been doing better. הרופא אמר כי הוטב לו, וגם הוא הרגיש עצמו כל כך טוב, עד שהיה בטוח שהיום כבר יעזוב את מיטתו. He's starting to feel better, the doctor told me he's doing better. He's certain, today's the day I'm going to get out of bed. והנה נדבקו בו שוב חדשות וייסורה ועוד נתגדלו. And he realizes, oh my God, my fever did not go down, whatever the equivalent is, and it's getting worse. זה שני לילות אשר מגודל ייסורה ותדע שנתו ממנו. Now it's two nights, he's starting to freak out. He can't sleep, he's like, what's wrong with me? The doctor said I was doing better, I felt I was doing better. What's wrong with me? שלא נדע. Did you ever go through a, a, a long process that had no diagnosis? Or... It had, a, it, had a, it had a misleading diagnosis, and you, you, you didn't know what was going on with you, and you got scared. It's one of the scariest things in the world, Hashem Ishmael, when you can't put you the just thing. You had that, something like that. Uh, recently, yeah. Yeah, earlier this year. Yeah. A few weeks ago. Not too long ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. But I didn't, I know, but I, uh, the weird thing is, I went through something crazy a few years ago, much crazy, like mamash this, that I didn't freak, uh, this didn't freak me out. I was just like, look, I don't, I, I can't figure out what's going on here. Um, but I think the test is to simply not freak out. It's not take more vitamins, go to a different doctor. That's not actually the test. Because I was under supervision. And it's just, I had, I had like fever for like nine days or something. It's nuts. But I did blood work and everything. So I was like, okay. But it's a very, sometimes people get, they sink into this and it's, it's dreadful. It's scary. it's scary, right? Especially when one day you're, that's exactly what he said here. One day you, one feel, day you feel good. good. One day you feel good. Actually had that with right? Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. 100%. Yeah, people felt better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> nachon, <laughs> nachon. That was one of the main uh, uh, like mood killers of during the, during the, whole, uh, 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 the whole episode. זה שני לילות אשר מגודל ייסוריו תדע שנתו ממנו, for two nights he can't even sleep, וכבר כל ביתו נתבלבל, היום לא יום והלילה לא לילה, I don't know what day is, I don't know what night is, זה מבני ביתו מתנדנם ביום, כיוון שהיה נאור עמו בלילה, so one of, his, one of his people in his house is like snoozing through the day because he stayed up with this person that's sick, וזה בקושי גורר את רגליו העייפות מפני שזמן רב עמד עליהן. And another person in the house could barely keep their head up because they were standing over them, massaging them, massaging them the whole time this person was in pain. Basically, just, he's kept the whole house up with him. And inside of him, he's starting to feel, uh-oh, it's about to come. Doomsday. And a person is completely shaken up to the highest degree from this sense of being completely not in control of what they're feeling. And not only that, one day good, one day bad. Two days good, one day bad. It messes with our mind completely. Fear of the unknown. Or a denial of everything that you thought was known. Like things you were holding on to. And you're like, no, that's actually not happening. So a person knows, look, I'm not here forever. Even though now your heart's telling you, okay, that statement you said that I'm not here forever, that's happening. How do you say that in English? Mefalkes. Uh, uh, like a seizure. Yeah, uh, shake. Yeah, 
the body begins to shake like when someone goes through a seizure. And if you've ever seen that, it's a very, it's a very scary thing. Now listen to these words the Piyasetz Nerebbe says. Listen to every word he says, but this line is very key. Ma rav hu amirchak ben ha min amita leven amita ba'atzma. How large is the distance between the fact that I know that I'm not going to be alive forever and actually dying? So I know something. What role does that knowledge play in my actual uh, emotional, uh, you know, ma'arechet? Big, huge distance between the two. By the way, we could do this with a lot of different things. I know Hashem runs the world. Now, plug that into whatever it is that's bothering you today and realize <laughs> how great the distance is between something that I know to actually playing a role in my life. Huge. The Rebbe is pointing out yeah, it's and how that works. And even in this place, the person is trying to cool down this, this crazy anxiety attack they're going through. He wants to throw it away, get it out of here. You hear what he, you see what he says in Yiddish? Nervous. Nervous. <laughs> That's what it says here, right? So <laughs> the person is trying to shut down those, those bad thoughts and those fear of, of, of what seems to be the inevitable, which is true. It's inevitable in the bigger picture, but knowing that it's right now is a different story. And he's not able to just shut out. He's not able to shut it all out. Person has been through crazy afflictions over his life. So a person has been through afflictions, but they've able to wrap their head around why they're going through what they're going through, get their act together, and hopefully move on. Even greater, and it could be even greater afflictions than what the person is going through now, at this stage in life, Bali says. I can't grasp, I can't figure out why this is happening to me. I can't contain this in my mind. I never even knew such bitter and heavy and difficult afflictions even exist, appear in the world. I can't tolerate it. You never, you never went, I mean, we could admit, like, it's just like, May as well make it a therapy session. Who hasn't, who hasn't been in a situation? <laughs> right now, as, I'm, as we're learning. I'm laughing, but I'm, I'm also like, crying. I'm also crying deep down inside because, you know, we've all been there. We've all been there. Where I, I, something so heavy comes down on me and I can't for the life of me figure out how to wrap my head around it and what I'm supposed to be doing with this. It doesn't all... Other things in life, I get that zets. Mm, you need to. We said it was time to go to cruise control, like lower yourself or whatever, or give more tzedakah. A friend of mine went through a, a horrible uh, uh, situation where Nachman Litzlan, for years, I think they couldn't have children, and he realized that his Indian was that he wasn't doing achnasas orachim with all the love that he could which is so deep, because that's really what bringing children into the world is. <laughs> and then he started like not just bringing in orchim, but making them feel like gold. I was privileged to be one of them. And things turned around? Then they, then they had kids. It was a later stage in life, and they started having children. Wow. So that's, you know, that's already a very big milo. A person can go through such an affliction like that and flip it around. To realize what it was. That's, Huge. That's the biggest... Here he's saying, I stay up at night, night after night, because I cannot wrap my head around this. This is, and, and that's what drives a person to sugar, like when they can't make any sense of it whatsoever. And it also the fact that he gets better one day starts messing with the mind also. So maybe like, okay, maybe it's not such a big tickle I need to do. Maybe it was just like something back, forth, back, forth. 
that's the game. And, and it really was happening, you're right. It was happening a lot with, with, uh, with Corona, Mamash. That exact thing of, I'm feeling you're good. You're two, three yeah. days, and you feel good. You feel and like you're, you're s- getting over it, and then a day later, you're worse than you were in the beginning. Like it was a few weeks ago. There was one day where I didn't have fever all day. And I got so, I was like, wow, this is so good. And then I woke up shaking. I was like, so did I feel good? Right? I started doubting. Was that even considered feeling good? Right? It, and it, it, it drives us crazy. Okay, back inside, six lines in the bottom. Five lines. Five lines. After another night, another sleepless night, a person feels they're done, they're toast, their body is toast, their limbs, their, everything is broken. Basically, the death and the grave are basically containing him and his body. זאת אומרת שמן השמיים כבר שלחו את כלי הזעם לפרק את גופו ולכלותו בקבר יסיימו. And he starts to understand that, yeah, this, end, this ending period in life, they already planned this out in Shemayim, and they're saying, yalla, get ready, that's what, you're, that's what you're about to experience. Okay? בנב, next page, צד הגימו. It's a very optimistic piece today. בנב, בנותה ואשתו מרגיעים אותו. His children are coming to the room trying to chill him out. His wife comes trying to calm him down. En davar. En davar, o tavri. Don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll get out of this. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get well. O takum mitatcha. You're going you're gonna to get up from your bed one day. Vadavar ze od mosif laadiv lo. And this actually continues to, to pain him. Choshev hu, o ma meusha raiti im beemet ken haya. Oh, how happy I would be if I actually believed that what this person just told me would actually happen. Oy, matov, oh, matov, uma matok haya. How sweet would it be? Lu haitali ot tikva liot imachem. Oh, but we, but we still could have done together. Oh, but we still could have done together. The crazy thing is that how soon we forget right after we're better. Right? Forget better. Sometimes you meet people, sometimes, that they mamish, it, you know, like, how something how happened. How many people during the last pandemic had a hard time breathing. Right. And still right. take for granted. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just... Better. Of course. Of course. How many people dreamed of coming to Eretz Yisrael when they didn't have it and all they would do in Eretz Yisrael? Then they come to Eretz Yisrael and they may as well be living in Chicago. No. Chicago. Florida. Whatever. <laughs> Florida. Like Florida. <laughs> whatever. Your wife's from Florida. Where are you from? Yeah. New York, Cleveland. Cleveland. We're going to St. Louis. Look at this. How patient are we with our kids when we're abroad and they're at home, you know? How yeah. patient is the wife? Come home? Oh, yeah. Oh, if only Screams, I could do that. Screams yeah. in my house. And yeah. Oy, uma matok haya, lu haita li otik, vayot imachim, uma metuka itchabrutchem imadi, meimai, aval lo yerechu hayamim veekra mikem el hakever. But I, I, I wish we had more time, but I'm going to be taken from you and thrown into the grave. But the, the worms and the... Uh, um, yeah, the, 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 all that they're going to be my chevrusos. I'm there with them for eternity. You're going to keep on having sukkahs, Hanukkah. I'm going to be with them with the worms and the maggots. Yeah. Yes, the soul ascends above. But the body also has a certain value. A person has a value for his body. And most of his life he's working on that, satiating that. But yeah, the Torah also values the body. Think about it. Almost all mitzvahs we do involve the body. Every bracha involves the body. How so? It's my body that's speaking. huh? Your mouth. Your mouth meaning, so there is a value to the body. Much more than your lips. Your mind. Sure, sure. Everything. Right. <coughs> so some will say, is your mind really your body, right? Right, whatever. 
ואף לתחיית המתים, אין אוסף ולאסף ואריו פרתחייה סמיס, ואין אוסף ולאסף ואריו פרתחייה סמיס, שממש גוף הזה יקום, that the actual body will, will come out of the grave. ואתה, איך אשאר בגופי, בבור חשוך ובאדמה רטובה, but how, how could I, why would I choose to stay in, how could I stay in this body, in this dark um, ditch, yeah, and in wet land, soil. והוא מסתכל על ידו, מתבונן בה, ומזו מה יעשה? חטיבת, חתיכת ריקבון ועצמות ולא יותר. והם, אשתו ובניו ובנותיו, איפה יישארו? צרתם נגעה אל ליבו, ומר לו מאוד אף בוכה עליהם. Basically just describe his painting. He's painting such a gloomy picture of, of an inevitable outcome for, not everyone, meaning this way, But he's saying over here, you want to go to illustrations? You want to go to visualizations? Go here. Because this could happen to you. Could you would Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the way we described it, happen to you? Maybe yes, maybe no. This could happen to anyone. Because the end will happen to everyone, but the process of the days leading up to the end could be this way. For some people, there's a person I know that's very much a part of my life, For most of my life, he's 70, 70, 70, 70. He's been living like this for more or less three years. Mamash like this. I get almost daily emails like this. Mamash, 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 mamash. Exactly this. He's, he's real sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's keep on. If we're already in the, in the, in the, in the, in the like, let's, let's keep on. Let's okay. It off. Let's just finish it off. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read it a little bit faster, okay? גם מאוהביו באים אליו לבקרו, וגם הם מרגיעים אותו. Everyone's coming, the people that love him coming, trying to chill him out, מברכים, מחזקים אותו. מתחילה אפשר דבריהם מחזקים אותו. So in the beginning, maybe their words are actually given. אבל כשייסוריו מוסיפים להתגבר עליו, שוב מחשבתו מוספת להעיק לו. מה נעים היה לו להיות עמכם בניי וחבריי, ומה מאוד מר לי להיבדל ולהתרחק מכם אל בור חשוך ולחסוך שם יחידי. It's like, wow, I wish I could stay with you, and how bitter it is for me what I see I'm about to do. מה יק... or what, what, what's about to happen to me. מה יקר וקדוש היה לי להיות עמכם ולשמוע את נגינתכם ואת שירתכם להשם. I wish I could sit around you, family, sit around the Shabbos table, listen to the Zmiros we've been singing for years, hear how you sing to Hashem. Uma kashe umar yeli lishka ve lishmo at kilkurei ashlatsim ve zimzumei atolaim asher tachti usivotai itrachshu. And instead of hearing the Shabbos table Zmiros, I'm going to be hearing crickets and maggots noises. Wow, the Rebbe had an imagination, huh? Unbelievable, the Rebbe's imagination. Unbelievable. לו ידעתי בניי, לו הייתה לי תקווה ידידיי, שעל כל פנים, בשבתות וימים טובים, ירשו לנפשי לעוף אליכם, להתחבר בהתחברותכם הטהורה, כבר שמחתי. If, if I would be told that this would be my reality during the week, but on Shabbos and Yantiv I'd have this ability to fly out of my grave and join you in your simcha, how much simcha that would bring me, right? כי אז בתורתכם ובתפילתכם הקדושה הייתי מתעטף, I'd wrap myself. With your Torah and your Tefillah, I'd hold on to your belts while you're dancing. Will I even be granted any permission even to gaze at this from far? Or from between the... Um, oven to the stove, I guess that's uh, just like the, like a tiny crap, right? I mean, that's the, what he's using, I think, the, the wording he's using here. Just to glance at you at this moment of glory. Who knows? All of it should be that you remember me like I remember you. עד כמה שיהיה לי רשות לזכור אתכם, to the extent that I'll be given permission, 
to remember you. אבל גם זאת מי יודע. But who knows what they'll let me remember, כי אין זיכרון לראשונים. מה קשה להיפרד ומה קשה להיקרא מכם. It's just devastating to say goodbye. ובמחשבתו, מתחיל הוא לעשות... אוקיי, so now a person is like this. Now he's starting to do a חשבון נפש. He starts to do a חשבון נפש. במחשבתו מתחיל הוא לעשות חשבון הנפש. מי יודע מה יעשה בכלל בנפשו? בשעה שהיה גופו חזק ויצלו היה מגרה אותו, when he was physically strong and his יצר would come and start to להתגרות בו, it would start to, uh, what's the right word? entice him, thank you. אז גם כשהתחיל לפשפש במעשיו, when he would start to look into doing a חשבון נפש and looking into how he's been, היה יצר הרע מסמא את עיניו שלא יראה את נגעיו. ויצר הרע would come and blind the person from being able to look at their own blemishes. You see, that's, that's what the Yitzhah does quite often. It doesn't allow us to look at what needs to be worked on. And if he did see some kind of blemish in his midst, he would, he would, yeah, how do you say that? He would, yeah, he'd smooth it over so that it doesn't seem so bad. Remember things when we were younger, If we thought we did them, we, we thought we'd be the worst people in the world. But then we get older, we've done them so often that by now those things aren't even considered bad things anymore. No? Just me? Just me or the nervous like silence? Because, yeah? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, boys. <laughs> לא כן אתה כבר נוטה ולמות, but now the person's about to die, his body's not strong, he's not even doing the work of trying to fix things. רחמנא ליצלן, ואין לו לא יצר ולא תאווה, I'm not working now on, on suppressing evil inclinations and lusts. אתה רואה את הכל כמו שהוא, he's seeing everything as they are, עבירות, פגמים, ובכלל ימיו ושנותיו בשטותים והבלים עברו, and the hours and hours and hours of fun Olympics. That's what a person sees. Osha, I told you why, I told you what I think is uh, Gehenom. I told you recently what I think Gehenom is going to be. Strong. Gehenom is going to be, they're going to make you watch yourself in live time, connect uh, the amount of time that you were scrolling. So Gehenom is going to be, they're going to put you in some kind of a room, and they're going to be like, okay, this is what hell is. What, look at this person. And they're going to look at you, and in real time, you're going to have to spend the amount of hours that you actually did that in this world. Doesn't the Zohar say something similar? In the sense that they show you a picture of... Who you could have been. Who you, well, who this you is, were, and who this you is just a, been. This is just like a more detailed, yeah, of like, what you were. <laughs> what you could have been, right, is... is משהו אחר. או שאכל ושתה ועשה שאר דברי תאווה בהם. או שנשא ונתן כדי שיוכל לאכול ולשתות ומלא את אהבותיו או את הונו את כבודו, meaning whatever it is you were busy doing. ואפילו אם למד, התפלל ועשה מצוות בזמן מן הזמנים, and even yeah, once in a while I would learn, I would dive and I would do mitzvahs, האנשים זולתו אשר ראו אז חשבו כי הכל באמת והכל בצדק. People around him said, wow, he's coming to Minion, wow, he's put a yamaka on, wow, he looks like he has a job, he's getting his life together. אבל הוא בעצמו לא מכיר את מחשבתו, אבל this person knows his own מחשבה וכוונתו. Only we know if those things people looked at and seemed like it was so glorious, only we know if it was ממש, ממש, ממש for real. And that's how a person at the end of their life is looking back at all those moments with this like real, unfiltered, uncensored, clear as daylight vision at, at their life. Only a person knows, did you do that because you knew someone would think you're a gewalt? Or did you do those holy things because it was actually about HaKadosh Baruch Hu and about your own neshama? So I once went into Rav Weinberger so many years ago. And I said, I don't think it's possible to actually be a musician and be... And ever the sham unless you don't ever perform, do anything in public <laughs> but that but then you're not you know you know like my dream was to be was to actually put out music and never ever have to perform it 
uh, I was I remember I was discussing this with him. Like, how how could it be? It's machmas hametzias. It's and so I, I thought like, oh, and, and to be a rabbi is also like that. It's all about people think. And I realized now it's a very different thing. When you're a musician, people are coming up to you all the time saying you're 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 Moshe Rabbeinu. When you're a rav, people are constantly coming up to you and telling you you're Korach, you're, you're, you're everybody else. No one's coming to you. No one's saying anything nice anymore. It's a different. <laughs> There's this expectation of like. You should be my, you know, not slave, but you should be, you know. A musician has the heart, it's just heart stuff. It's just like, oh my God, wow, your nigunim has changed my life. No one comes up to a rav and, and says, wow. You must have changed my yeah, life. Your, you know, your conduct or your, your whatever it is. And of course, the avodav, whatever, it's a different ball game. <laughs> it's a different ball game. I don't take much from him, but one of the things that if you happen to be uh, Anus and you daven at home, you can't get to Minyan. How's your davening in Minyan compared to how it is in Shul? And then you'll know if your davening in Shul is really the same Shemayim. Because people, because when you're davening at home, you're davening with the same Kavana that you're davening oh, in Shul. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. He's such a Nara Chassid because, because I can't tell till today if it's a Yetzir Hara or Yetzir Tov, that I have to daven b'yechidus. Tami mani yom? Bidiuk ha'afuch. B'chol ofen. Yeshua, you know what I mean with that? That last thing, like... Yeah. I can't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get... No, it's a From every angle, right? Of course. From every angle, whether it's... Of course. Whether it's laziness, you know, let's get down with this, or finally I'm not around the other people, I can do my own thing. Everything. Learning, I learning. I'm always triggered. If I have there's a cold Torah, that's a natural, you know. <clears throat> learning, I'm always triggered by that, and I, I don't think that that's the, like with with, with davening. It's mamash different. It's like learning is being. And it's, it's so interesting that you don't have to learn with. There's no chiyuv to learn with someone. It's, it's easier. Also, if you daven, yeah, by. it's interesting. Davening, you have a, there's a chiyuv to daven with people because it's, hard. it's harder. But that's probably why there's a chiyuv. I feel yeah. like if you dive in by yourself here and there, and it's going to be like a very special experience, and then it's, then that question comes in. But like really, if you were diving in by yourself every day, I don't think would it be, be right. Right. right? Probably not. You're right. Corona. You're right. <sighs> and then we were certain, we were certain that there's no way in the world we're ever going to treat shul the same when we come back, right? Becholofen. Oh. Let's finish this paragraph. Becholofen. אפשר הקומץ קטן מן כל תורתו ועבודתו שהיא לשם שמיים יש לו מכל ימיו ושנותיו. פרס כאן קם לתודה ריאליזיישן, אחרי טייקינג על גלנס על איזה חייף, כמה זה היה ממש לשם שמיים, וקם באות עם איזה פוקט של שמיים, של שם שמיים, של שם שמיים, של שם שמיים, והנה התורה כשלמד על כל פנים כיוון את דעתו לדעת מה הוא לומד. אוקיי, אז כשהוא היה לומדים, הלומדים גרבת את המים. to really think about what he's learning. That means like, when it comes to davening, where in the world were you? And where in the world was your davening? Like the famous story of Rabbi Levi, it's like Reddit Shemar. How many davenings did you go through that you didn't have no idea what you were even saying? Kind of like, it's like when people, we said this once, when people are, are saying Kriyat Shema, and it's kind of like when people, we said this once, when people are saying Kriyat Shema, and at a certain point they're like, they, they don't know if they're in the first parsha or the end of the second parsha. When there's certain words that show up in two different brachas, you can't remember, wait a second, am I on the third bracha or the eighth bracha, right? I'm not even talking about people that don't understand Hebrew. I'm, I'm talking about Tavka, those that don't understand Hebrew. With what face is he going to come before the king? And he sees, I stood before you, Hashem. I spoke to you with the, with, in present tense. I used the word ata. But in my mind, the distance between what my mouth was uttering, talking to God in first present, right? To where my mind was, oh my God, what a distance. 
ואת מידותיו, האם תיקן ולשון אלה, לחידוס, כי נתיה וקו, אבל הוא מדבר על אדם שמגיע לבית הזה, שהוא מדבר על כל הדבר הזה. על כל הדבר הזה, אתה יודע, באמת עמוק חשבון הנפש, זה צריך להיות כמו זה, לא באיזה השם, כשאתה 119. כל שנה, כל חודש, ממש. I'm nervous to say more than that, but, but obviously the real tzaddikim are doing, the Rebbe Rebbe Zusha did this every single night. This level of cheshbon and nefesh. Is it important? Kriyat Shema? Or is that part? It's there. I'm talking about the Maisa, but I, you know. Ma asa min atzmutom min ishnot chayav? What did I do with my life? Mikol ta'anuga v'simchotav shaya ne'ane b'chol amon yamav v'shaotav with all the pleasures I had, all those things that brought me simcha, nothing of that is left for me now. Besides being disgusted by it. And then there's a person that his way of life is presented before his eyes. And he sees himself לא את עצמו ראה בשעה מגושמה זאת, ולא את העולם, זולתי התאווה. והאם כי, והאם כי יש אדון עולם הביט עליו זכר אז? Then a person can also be shown imagery of themselves, completely infatuated and encompassed by a lust that drove them crazy. And now, at the end of their life, they're realizing while you were completely going nuts with a certain taiva, Hashem was looking right above you the whole time. But while you're in it, you can't get out of it. That's what they've shown. That's one of the things you've shown. Hoi ma marihem yisurei amavet, uma meod kashe lesavlam, kshod meulim becherpa, umeus beatzmo mikon chayav. So a person eventually realizes, he says, Rotzeu lekalel et yomi valdo, lechaim megoalim veyisurim marim keilu. So a person wants to curse the day he was born. Such bitterness taking place in his life. If we continue, we're never going to come back to this year. So I'm stopping here. And I want to recommend a movie, actually. It sounds weird, but it's actually it's a clean movie. And it has a lot to do with this stuff. My wife doesn't like it, because she doesn't like how it's por- some, a certain concept is portrayed. But I think it's very interesting. It's called Defending Your Life. Have any of you seen it? Without... Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep. Do you know? Do you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Defending your life. I, wa- I, I watch it every L. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but, it, but I, I do. And, but, but no, no, because I'm looking at this, and I'm realizing, like, why am I saying it? You'll understand. You'll understand. This is the homework that everyone wants to do after a sheer and Torah, right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We will continue with Hashem this next week, and Be'ezu Hashem will continue learning Friday morning. Thank you.